Hi, I'm Jack. I'm going to walk you through building the FK-1. So, what you'll want to do first is to get everything out of the box and lay it out. Just make sure that you have everything. There's a small chance that we've messed up the order and in that case just contact us and we'll get it situated or sorted out. So, you'll need switches, keycaps, knob. Uh, these are optional to the order so you might not have them, but you will need switches to assemble the board. You'll need the plate, the angled header, which looks like this. The encoder with the two bits of hardware, the washer and the nut. The Pro Micro, which is in a baggie. The PCB. Uh, an Allen key for the knob. Two screws for mounting and mounting tape for mounting. Um, you'll also want to uh, have some cardboard. I would recommend using the box that your order came in. And then you'll need a soldering iron, solder, um, some tape. And if you have them, I would recommend uh, flush cuts. Um, so the first thing that you'll want to do is fold your, your box a little bit. So I like to just fold this flap here like this. And you'll want to fold it at an angle that's, that is equal to what this angle is so that your plate is nice and flat with the uh, with the table so then that way when you solder the circuit board on here it's it's easier to solder you're not trying to like balance this plate on here so um, this is probably pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect then you're going to want to grab some tape and tape that into place and this is a lot more than what i would recommend or what you need fact I kind of screwed it up but that's okay something like this then what you'll want to do is you'll want to use the screws that came with this and you'll you'll use this to use these screws to poke into the cardboard um, and you may actually need to use a screwdriver to do this as well do not use this hole right here when you do this um, because the pro micro is going to cover it up and then you'll have a screw that is just stuck. Uh-oh. That's a problem. So um, do not use this second hole right here. So I'm going to place this like this. In the first hole, just gonna poke it through like that, and then I'm just going to grab this screw and place it into the other hole like that. Then you'll want to grab something heavy like a book or a coffee mug or in this case I have this drill battery and just place it in the box that way it doesn't I mean it still wobbles but it's not going to fall over. The next thing we'll want to do is kind of set this aside and prepare the PCB. The first thing we're going to want to attach the PCB is the angled header and it looks like this. It goes in like that and then it's better if it slopes upwards a little bit so the goal is to have it not perfectly parallel, but, but kind of um, pointing outwards a bit, just like that. So the best way to achieve that, I think, is to solder one of the middle pins first. So you can just lay it down on your table and then just solder the middle pin like that. And then you can pick it up and kind of maneuver this while it's hot. So you can drop it back into place and pull it up, wait for it to cool, and then now it's in place. Just like that. So once you've confirmed that it's in a good spot, and I would actually recommend opening up the Pro Micro and just testing it, making sure that it slides onto these headers nice. looks good to me. Then you can solder the rest of the pins. And I would verify that these are good connections because if you need to go back and reflow these joints, it will be pretty difficult. So it looks like this is pretty good. 
So then the next thing you want to do is place the Pro Micro onto the the pins. So with the text facing you, the components will be facing away from you. So it will look like this. This is very important. If you get this backwards, you'll have to you'll have to desolder everything, and I do not recommend doing that. So just like before, I would recommend starting with the middle pin and then making sure everything is aligned. And then if it's not aligned, you can heat up that middle pin and realign it. So in this case, you can see it's kind of slanting outwards a little bit, so I'm just going to heat that pin up and drop the Pro Micro into, into place. So now it's flush up against these, this insulating part of the header. So after you do that, you can then just solder the rest of them. And it might be easier to do it like this as well. There we go. So the end result should look something like this, all soldered together. So now we are going to move on to installing the PCB to the actual plate. So we'll need to put the switches in. Um, the LEDs are going to face northward and the pins are going to face southward, so they'll go in like this. And it might be easier to remove the plate, put the switches in, and then put the plate back, but these switches are pretty easy to, to get in. There you go. And then we will solder the PCB onto the switches. And I mentioned this earlier, but if you have a screw in this hole back here, and then you solder this PCB over it, that screw is going to be stuck. So make sure that you're using this hole and not that hole. So then go ahead and solder the pins in. So after you've got the pins soldered in, uh, you'll want to uh, solder the Pro Micro into the board. So typically, I like to snip the I like to snip the larger leads or the larger ground pins on the sides, and I also like to snip the three um, A ground and B pins um, so that they're flush with the bottom surface. But you don't have to do that. You can just leave it like this. Um, but I would recommend trimming. I would recommend going with this route because it's cleaner on the back. I'm going to do it without trimming just so that you can see how that works. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to bend the, the two pin side. You'll want to bend that those flat. Um, and you'll still want to have a slight angle to it, something like that. And then you'll just place them in. And if it doesn't move around much, you can just, uh, you don't need to add the hardware, but there's a pretty high chance that, that your heart, that this is going to kind of wobble around. It depends on how you solder up the switches, but essentially what you'll want to do is then add the hardware. So you'll want to hold the nut like this and then place the washer with the with the concave side going inwards so the the outward side is higher up than the inwards inward surface um, it's somewhat difficult to see on the camera but 
something like that and then without dropping it you'll then place the encoder or place the hardware onto the encoder and then hand tighten it and that will just keep it in place while you solder it so then you'll want to solder these the three pins into place you'll place the iron on the first pin furthest away from you and the pad heat it up and then place the solder on and bridge the connection the pin doesn't actually go through the hole something like that then you'll want to solder in the button side and I typically just heat up the, the pin and then dump a lot of solder onto it and then the solder then will flow into the pad underneath it There you go. And as you can see, th these pins are kind of poking up and as well as these right here. So that's why I like to cut them off because there's no reason for them to be there. Um, but you don't have to do that, if you, especially if you don't have any flush cutters. So then now that everything is soldered together, you can pull this off and you might need to use a screwdriver actually. set the box aside, pull the screws out, and now you have kind of the base completed. You'll want to finish tightening down the encoder, so you can use a 10 millimeter socket, or you can carefully use pliers without scratching the plate, or something else, but it just needs to be kind of hand tightened, just not too tight. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is attach the knob. So use the included Allen wrench in the kit and then you'll you'll place that into the set screw hole and I would recommend turning the Allen the set screw so that it, it barely pokes out you can see it's poking out like there so just just a little bit like that and that'll help you interface it with the flat part of the shaft so this the shaft has a flat section here and that set screw will go on to the flat section So place that on there and then you'll just finger tight, hand tighten it with the, the Allen key. Test out to make sure the button works. If the button doesn't work, it's likely that you the set screw is actually on the round part of the shaft and the knob is too far down and it, that there's not enough clearance for the button to work. Um, and then the last thing to do is to put the keycaps on. And that is pretty much it. Uh, this, I personally like to use mounting tape um, because it's pretty strong, um, but you can also use the screws that are included in the kit to mount it to an underside surface. And yeah, uh, make sure to uh, flash the firmware uh, with Vile and enjoy the macro pad.